it started as we predicted with the drive to CJ. His response was very strong and he burns Quan with a little misdirect down the line. 1 0, then serving. Backhand coming in the middle. Yeah, you see uh, Kwong Dong's serve there, creating a lot of pace. Ben returning that one long. Ooh, that drive stays in. Yeah, I mean, that was in. That was a great shot there. Nice technique by Christian. We got our traditional continental slightly eastern grip where we have Kwong with full western. Spanish tennis player style. Just miss. Yeah, CJ is being a little bit more aggressive. And CJ for, for the fans is Colin Johns serving right now at two. Just, just short there by Kwong Dong. Ben really pushing him back off the line. You see him creating a lot of space there to try and help out and get those dinks over the net. Just one too many right there. Christian's going to light it up, get a little roar there. That's the kind of point right there the ranchers could ignite, you know, a series of points here, get them excited. They love winning that one. 5-3 for the ranchers. Whoa. That is a missile being fired down the middle. Ben just not able to handle that one. The ranchers up 6-3. I do like how Ben, even on that block, still trying to shorten it up, not push them all the way back, making them come in, play their game. Yeah, absolutely. But that point shows you that, again, Christian and Kwan probably studied some film. They know exactly what the patterns are. And I would say that might be one of the advantages and disadvantages for Ben and Colin because they play a certain way and they do it really well. But sometimes if things are going wrong, there's a plan B, but plan C and D, that's when they might be a little bit vulnerable. But they're just so good at A and B. All right, working their way back, Ben Johns serving five, seven. There's a long return. Definitely tell the single serves are starting to come out a little bit here. Absolutely, and I would say we haven't seen too many uh, dream breakers in this tournament. Wow, what a dink by Christian Alshon right there, right behind Ben. I'd like to see him changing it up. I like that going behind Ben right there. I think 
Christian got bent on that misdirect because normally he looks to take a backhand out of the middle, and that's one of his better shots. And he kind of snuck in and slipped an inside-out slice forehand. So that's that's a pretty advanced level, but the pace of that shot was actually very good. Play of defense right there. Huang Dong finally able to get that one through. But yeah, good patience. I think sometimes it really pays off to hit a few high balls straight down the middle until you get a little bit of an angle and you can hit the ball a little bit shorter and off the court because people get a little bit too excited on those high balls and tend to miss them sometimes. People as in, I do that. I like to smash it, right? So I here we go. You just close your eyes too early. That's yeah. Another drive. So. The Rancher is definitely starting off hot, up three. Trying to throw that lob directly over the top of Colin. A little too much strength. Yeah, Kwan was lobbing a lot at the DRC okay. the Open. Here is, I think it's a little bit more difficult just because of the altitude. Like, I haven't seen even at least Jones, the queen of lobs worldwide in the this weekend. Nice. There's an Alshon, look at this. Poking it right down the middle. Good hold there, right? He makes Ben to the left and then a quick release down the middle. Yeah, a little little advised uh, speed up there, Christian Alshon. <laughs> it's a tough one to sneak by Ben after that. Get the 13 first, creating that side switch. It's Kwan Tan with a two-hander right there. Christian and Kwan are doing um, the same thing over and over again, right? They're driving at the person who's coming in with the return, and then you have to survive a big serve and maybe third and fourth drives. And um, they just did. Just like that. Uh, the tricky part is a little bit that Juan's and Christian's drives are actually quite different, right? Because Juan's drive dips a lot and Christian kind of goes through the court, so you have to react to them a little bit differently. Before the swing, an amazing firefight at the net. That had just about everything in it. And a little ATP defense, hands battle, eventually put away by the ranchers. That was exciting. Very uncharacteristic mystique right there. All right, the ranchers pulling away here, up five, 15-10. Sean rips that one. Yeah, good anticipation on the part of the Rangers so far. Perhaps another thing Ben and CJ could do is maybe soften up some of the counters and hit off pace. Because they're trying to go through the court, it seems like the Rangers are on it. I love watching 
everyone serve and return routines. That's like one of my favorite things across actually all sports. But uh, probably a good advice for players at all levels is to develop a routine before serving and returning. And that's a good time to watch your favorite pro, maybe copy them, maybe develop something that's unique to you. But uh, that always entertains me. As the ranchers uh, score another point there, how many times do you bounce the ball before you serve? Um, maybe one or two. They have a little chuckle right there, trying to play the speed up game, just not able to get that one. That one shoots long. Yeah, actually one of the first counters that went long. Juan and Christian has been playing pretty solid. I don't know, the, the amount of unforced there is, is under three right now. A real nice defensive one. Classic John's point right there, being able to fend off some aggressive dinks, and creating a mistake. Surviving, surviving. But again, this is Major League Pickleball, games to 25, rally scoring. You have to win on serve, and then you get a 24. This ball goes wide, but we're not going to discount the Carolina Pickleball Club. We have seen so many comes back, comebacks because of that win on your serve. starting to come back now. If any team can do that, it's going to be this one. Absolutely. If we believe it, they'll do it too. All right, 22 13 Ranchers. Got another big drive from the Ranchers. Very consistent. It seems like drawing out a good game plan with their coaching staff and their teammates and following it to the team. Oh, Sean, with the backhand flick, reach it in right down the middle. Yeah, that was game a nice point. Throw. Just like that, the and also Etta and Tina. Uh, Tina was on the right, and Etta was on the left. So we see a side switch for both teams and a partner switch for the Carolina. All right, uh, Rangers are off to a quick start, 2-0. And before we get too deep into this match, I just want to say a huge thank you to all the sponsors for this MLP event. Obviously, the Pickler, the facility we're in, and Balkan, the Bowl, and. Margaritaville, and maybe you you want to mention a few sponsors? Yeah, absolutely. So there's a good one out there. The Insoles Curex doing a great job here. Uh, Malk, the official plant-based drink, Major League Pickleball. Margaritaville again, beautiful facility. The sponsors some local tournaments as well, really supporting the sport. So none of this would be possible without uh, the great sponsors that we have here. And the volunteers. Utah comes up huge with volunteers. Love it. So we're into this game here. We've got 3-1 ranchers. A lot of volunteers, big Cali Joe fans. They had braids coming out of their hats. I mean, you know, guys wearing the braids dressing. It was pretty impressive. Yeah, there's a photo of me out there somewhere with a braid. Yeah. 
incredible resets there by Pesnik and then putting it away after he catches one off the top of the net. 4-1 Ranchers. Yeah, some um, players on the court, they know each other's games really well. Uh, Etta and Jesse used to play together. Oh, sorry, Tina and Jesse used to play together on the PPA, and then they've competed against Etta and Brooke multiple times. So we're definitely looking to see some of the weaknesses potentially exposed, but also good anticipation just because the players know each other's patterns really, really well. 2-4. ITP at the end. That is an incredible point right there by both sides. Carolina pulling it out. We had resets galore. I mean, that was incredible. Yeah, absolutely. It looks like as far as patterns goes, um, there's a little bit of pattern going on between Jesse and Tina, but Tina is looking to move the ball around just a little bit more. And then maybe Brooke is going to be a little bit more aggressive and help Jesse in the middle so Jesse can stay home and be ready for Tina's, Tina's dings, and what a sweet backhand flick. A great flick by an experienced player, and they've tied it up here at four. Just out, she's trying to push that pattern a little bit here. Look at that, Carolina taking the lead, coming back. Yeah, Jesse, definitely one of the best dictators in the game cross court. Uh, Brooke has got a pretty solid backhand. She can send it. That's her favorite shot. She can send it inside out and inside in two-handed. She cooks it pretty hard, so you got to be ready. Also, an excellent drive for Brooke. So far, that's why I'm thinking most of the returns are going to go to Jesse. She probably won't miss, but she probably won't hurt him too much with a drive. And a right able to get out of the way. The crowd cheering on that move. As they pick up another point. Yeah, Jess has been doing it for you know quite a while here. Been on a few major league pickleball teams. Definitely has experience in this format. It'll go a long way helping them pick up this game. Hopefully the match. Yeah, in fact we have uh, Jesse is a major league champion, so is Edda Wright. lands in. Yeah, you definitely see that pattern really coming to play right now. The backhand cross-court dinks from Irvine and Pisnik. And normally Jesse doesn't like to speed up cross-court, but here I think if you speed up cross-court, usually the ball is going back down the line and then Brooke is sitting on her backhand. I think she had, might have a slight edge on the counter power against Tina. So maybe that's why that's their go-to right now. Um, Brooke's speed up goes a little bit long, but the game is still very close. 6 7. The Rangers serve. Off the net and out. Yeah, Irvine definitely adapting her game. You don't stay at the top for as long as she has by not, you know, adapting, changing, and making sure that you uh, are staying competitive with winning strategies. Oh, yeah, everybody has to. Like, this has been a good breakthrough year for Tina. And then Edda's been kind of on the scene last year. She did really, really well. Um, Brooke is a little bit newer. Well, she's actually just came back uh, from having a baby maybe seven or eight months ago. But uh, she's gaining 
skills in doubles and in mixed doubles rapidly. She was obviously a elite college tennis player at the University of Michigan. Sensational singles player. I've lost to her many times. And it's just fun to, yeah, it's fun to watch people progress and also be challenged because if they're getting better, I have to get better. So That's great. this has been super exciting time. That's a little bit of a newer shot. You see Pizik's backhand flick right there, setting it up, a tie eight, eight. game right here. 8-8. Eight, eight. Yeah, that's the part of the game that Tina's been working on, being just a little bit more aggressive and having some combinations and options. Good drive, good backhand flicks. Jesse and Tina in their comfort zone, and they're not in a rush to go anywhere. It looks like a drill session going right. on over there. Yeah. I mean, just classic, you know, points. Dink Battles waiting for one. Buckner just short on that one. Oh, almost over. A little bit more of a firefight there. 9-9, nine, nine. I mean, the strategy seems to be working for both teams. Nobody really willing to change it up here. Just going uh, point for point. Uh, good footwork there by Pizdik. Right moving over to take that middle, help a partner out. And then Edda slides in just in time with a backhand inside and finish encounter. Great return by Brooke. Edda seems very confident. I don't know if you noticed how early she went in uh, forward, knowing that Tina is going to make a third shot. And that's something I think players, well, kind of, or amateur players ask a lot, is when is a good time to move in together as partners or one at a time. It really depends on the geometry and the situation, but absolutely, if you're playing with somebody who's a third shot machine, you can be a little bit more free about going forward and moving pressure. But if you're playing with somebody who is a little bit up and down, it's better to wait and stay, especially if you're quick and you can close that gap a little bit later. Right there, you see Buckner squeezing in, trying to get in the middle. 11-12. off the net. Yeah, back to that third shot a little bit. Something the amateur is definitely taking away from this one is the importance of not having to be at the net directly after your third. It's okay to take a fifth out of the, you know, out of the air, reset a little bit, especially watching these points here. As the ranchers get to third. Get a shot that's a little bit higher, I might choose to reset or drive. But anything below, I'm going to be very, very disciplined. But I also know I have the skill set to do that, and I also know if I reset a little bit softer, then I can kind of delay my movement and then sneak in a little bit later. But some people like to be a little bit maybe more explosive. They like to close in immediately. They're faster than me and good for them, you know? So I think it really depends kind of on your individual physical ability, your shot making ability, and of course geometry is a factor. You can't fight gravity, so when the goal is low, you need to reset. Very good tips right there. The Ranchers up 14 13. Got a right on the serve. We replay those here. 14 13. Wow, Irvine putting a lot of spin on those backhands. That's tough to handle. Pisnik just not able to. Really get a grasp on that one. Yeah, and usually you try to hit those balls out of the air, but she's actually able to hit them short enough in the box where it's difficult. Ooh, 
unfortunate right there. But yeah, our angle right here, you could see that thing spinning. Wow. That is definitely professional pickleball at its finest. Absolutely. Perfect draw. Yeah, I think we're going to start to see more of that as Pizzik starts to heat up a little bit. She's going to get a majority of thirds. She's been driving. Might choose to start dropping it here, change it up. Well, it looks like she is driving for him and then dropping back in. And a lot, of, a lot of players do that. Um, I'm usually, I usually play that way as well. I tend to slice most of my backhands. I've been working on a two-handed backhand drive for singles, and occasionally I use it in doubles, but usually not everybody has two solid drives from both wings. So you can see Ben is similar, right? He cuts on the backhand side, and then he rolls on the forehand side. But that helps with the scouting report and anticipating what shots can come from your opponent. Yeah, Jesse's dinking in one spot, and Tina is going between cross and middle. And then both of them are looking for either a flip out of there, maybe of the bounce speed up. Oh, oh, I was really hoping that play was going to keep going. That was incredible. Had a right tiptoeing around the line, resetting balls. Couple lob attempts, well defended. Yeah, Edda's doing a good job staying awake and engaged because she hasn't seen too many balls while Jesse and Tina are doing their thing. So, way, way to be with us, Edda. Let's go E, that's the nickname her teammates have been giving her. shoulder you mentioned it Irvine digging to the same spot whereas Pizik is moving it around definitely a different pattern you see maybe two outside one inside how important is it you know for the amateurs out there to move it around at the kitchen line instead of the same spot over and over well I think it kind of depends on the scouting report and what they're trying to achieve with that right a lot of people have like really good forehands like right now Tina has liberty to go center in the corner because Jesse doesn't tend to speed up of the bounce from the middle, right? But let's say you're playing somebody who likes that shot, then you might have to stay from, away from dinking to the middle altogether, right? And sometimes that's the case it's actually in mixed doubles, right? So it depends a little bit on the situation, but they're both going, even if Tina is moving around, she's still going for the exact same spot in the middle and the exact same spot. Um, cross court, which is not in the corner at all. Um, so what I would point out from their textbook thinking is they're aiming for big spots. There are no things that actually end up going very close to the sideline. That was a great charge by Jesse. I bet she would love to take that back, but two hand and backhand goes in the net. 22-15, the Rangers are pulling away a little bit. Games to 25. What a dig. What a dig. Just wide, great defense, you're right. The Ranchers are pulling away here, 23-15. But yes, Jesse is trying to be a little bit more aggressive of that forehand middle dink. Bad luck. Good try right there. All right, let's see if Carolina can make a run. Down seven. That's one way on the ace. Yeah, that's what they call it in tennis. Let's right, 
just long. All right, here we go. Game point. Ranchers looking to go up two to nothing in this match. And there it is. The Ranchers go up two to nothing. The ladies 25-17, too decisive. Be aggressive and perhaps keep Jesse off the line a little bit, but we'll see. They still have to execute it. What a shot there by the hometown favorite. Yeah, you're seeing, you saw two different styles of games. Now they're playing together. See what happens. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, Etta is dangerous in front of Ben because she can misdirect behind and if the ball is left a little higher, she probably has a pretty good chance um, of punishing Ben or at least putting him on the back foot on the left. I would probably give Jesse a slight edge in the, in the dinky. Um, but we'll see. I think maybe yeah, Etta might move the ball around a little bit. Ooh, was that ATP in? Was it good? Let's see, right here on the replay. Oh yeah, oh, fading yeah. back, hitting it in. That's a great shot. Perfect resets. That one just got up in the wheelhouse of Alshon, able to put it away. And uh, yeah, well, miss hit by Ben kind of left it up for, for Christian. 3-2. Nice drive, handled perfectly. Back to TT. Well, good hands battle there, won by the Ranchers. They take a 4-2 lead in this first mixed doubles match. Yeah, Jesse was banking on Christian sitting middle, but he stayed home, so she will probably bring that ball back next time. Mm, sneaky. There's the aggressiveness of Alshon coming out right there. Three-point lead. Yeah, he's been hitting the ball very clean. And the secret to that, believe it or not, is good footwork. It's not necessarily the quality of the stroke, which is also important, but he moves really well and he puts himself in the position to hit the ball in the strike zone every single time. That's why he's able to deliver consistent results. I mean, it is relentless blood pressure right now from the ranchers, taking a five point lead. doesn't hit the ground first, hits the back wall. <laughs> He's trying to power that one through. And that length really coming into play right there on that backhand. Be able to reach in the top over the kitchen. Yeah, nice roll goes over, very soft but takes time away from their opponents by not letting the ball bounce there. Another miss hit in the middle. 9-3, Ranchers. Right in the strike zone there for Alshon, able to put it away. Just wide. Definitely see, you know, John trying to match the intensity when he gets a chance to attack back rather than just getting attacked. Yeah, well, 
so maybe they're going to try to be a little bit more aggressive on the returns. That will help them with the fourth, but... Go behind Alshon right there, doesn't work. He's almost like he's baiting Jesse to go down the line. And it's not a bad play. Um, I do that sometimes as well. You know, I have to be ready to cover line. And if they read me, still find the middle somehow. But. Ooh, that one hits the ceiling. Did it hit the ceiling? All right, that one was out. But yeah, showing your opponent and opening down the line, but then quickly closing the gap is not, not the worst play ever, especially if you force him to hit into one of your favorite shots. Yeah, definitely see Carolina want to set up more of those dink rallies with Jesse and Etta. That's more of a favorable pattern for them right now. As they start to climb back here, down five. 6-11, yeah. Ben giving them a taste um, of their own medicine. But yeah, that's probably the adjustment we're going to see from Ben and Jesse, trying to serve a little bit bigger, put a little bit of pressure on the third drive, try to get the returns a little bit bigger as well. There you go. That's a pretty hefty drive right there. Pretty heavy on the paddle. All right, we got us a 3.8. Jesse Urban serving 8-11. There we go. Just too much pressure right there from Ben Johns. Carolina clawing their way back. Here we go, 9-11. Christian wisely taking a little bit of time, uh, going to his towel. Not a timeout, but just gives him more room to breathe and maybe break the momentum. I don't see the Rangers taking the timeout here because they're so close to the uh, switch at 13, but normally, in any other situation, if a team goes on the run, what, what have we seen? About six points. Usually a timeout would be called. 10 11. Here, Jesse being disciplined there, keeping the ball across. Ooh, just a little Tape. bit tight. Yeah, that's a nice run there by Carolina to pull within two. Rancher trying to get to the side switch first. Wow, she was able to fend it off for a little bit, but not enough. Just a fan of the sport. Watching the third shot drive, the fifth shot drop, especially for Ben Johns. One of the prettiest things in sports. Absolutely. And it's, uh, it's a little bit more difficult than you think to go from one to another. That's why I would encourage People when they're practicing, you know, maybe you spend some time hitting just drives and then you spend a little bit of time of hitting just drops, but then deliberately hitting the combination of those shots. Also part of your warm up as well. And intentionally mixing them up in no particular pattern. It doesn't always have to be one drive, one drop, maybe two, two drives in the drop. But that's something worth practicing to get a little bit better at it. Absolutely, as Irvine hitting another ATP and then amped up, serves it long. Well, that's no fun. A highlight and then a miss serve. 14 12. Nice return by Jesse. That one's wide. The Ranchers pull within one. Yeah, Ben did a good job dictating in that point. Ooh, Carolina's tying it up here. First time since 0-0, zero zero, right? Yes, ma'am. Hey, it's better late than never. The lead only matters at the end, right? Oh, 
yes and no, but you have to stay locked in all the way through and earn it because nobody's going to get through to you. Alshon going behind John's right there. Jesse just not able to get it up. That was fired right at her. A lot of top spin. That was tough. What a great point right there. The lob, the resets. Great the take lob, of the there. The lob was a surprise to, to everyone. But Christian did a yeah, good job with his backhand roll, going for a big target, and just putting emphasis on, on spin. Another third shot drive right there from the ranchers. Winner point. Up three. That return goes a little bit short, and then Edda, Edda Wright capitalizes on that. The Rangers are back with momentum. right there and a couple of those off balance maybe some were attackable staying within it able to win that dink rally yeah maybe another idea jesse could do is occasionally dink to christian because so far every time she's gone to christian it's been with a misdirect and a little bit more pace but maybe just occasional soft dink and see if he redirects to ben out right there. Jesse winning that firefight at the net. I know. The one one handed and one legged off the leg court. So good good hand that coordination there. 15, able to handle that. That's another great point from the ranchers. Extending it out. You're right. Great defense right in the middle of that one. And that play was actually set up um, yeah, for Ben to close in on the right. He just miscalculates. Maybe he lost the ball somewhere, but he was set up for success there, closing in on the forehand. So bad luck. And a missed drive by Edda. All right, Carolina within four. Coming down the wire here. In this lat, in this mixed doubles game, the first one of this match, just long. A must win here for Carolina as the Ranchers are up two to nothing. Ben is getting a little bit animated, but you know it's an emotional sport. People love to see the emotions. Alshon with more pressure. Yeah, the MLP atmosphere, Major League Pickleball, definitely is a little bit different. The crowd gets into it. They got their teams, their players, but the players as well. Lots of roars from the players on winning shots. Yeah, 
Yeah, absolutely. You have this le extra level of uh, responsibility because you're not just playing for yourself. Uh, you're playing for not just your doubles partner or mixed doubles partner, but also a few other teammates and the ownership group. So there's a lot on the line. And there you go, Jesse with the two-handed backhand right down there for the winner. Yeah, both uh, Etta and Ooh. Jesse had a couple of sweet two-handers in this rally. That, that was sweet. Yeah. That looked good. There's nothing better than clean contact. What can I say? So that's a bummer. And we have we have a match point. take that one. All right, and unlike uh, the mid-season tournament that we played in Grand Rapids, this is a regular season match, and that's why, even though the match has been decided already, for the Rangers, we're still playing this, the fourth match, because it could matter down the end in terms of um, points and standings. So that's the difference between the mid-season and the regular season. Big forehand there by Pisnik. Yeah, so the next stop is Kansas City. I'll be there, and my team, SoCal Hard Eight. Ooh, baby. You guys are off to a nice start. So, yeah, it's a full season. It's capped off by the playoffs at the end of the year. It just sails long, which should be a lot of fun heading into Florida. Great athleticism, paddle control, resets, putaways. Wong Dong coming out looking to do exactly what he did in that men's doubles match. Yeah, while Quan is doing the same thing, we're actually going to see a transformation of CJ, right? He goes from playing two completely different roles, taking a lot more court and dictating points in mixed doubles, and then setting up and misdirecting and counting in the. In wow, what a shot. Sneaking 5-1 for the Rangers. <laughs> this that goes behind Johns, sliding it through. A little bit of elevated dig there from Buckner. Give it the opportunity. But yeah, the trick there is kind of make it look like a dink, and then from the same swing, be able to hit basically three shots, like a dink, something in between what Tina had, and like a 70% drive. Look at and this point developing. That's a foot fault. Johns as he's coming back through. He had that Ernie attempt that was well defended. 7 1 Ranchers. There you go, a little luck to get you started on the comeback, right? Almost got there. Nice aggressive drive from Colin. Okay, Colin. Tina didn't get a chance to set her feet. That's why I just hit the counter a little bit. And there he is. A Two new man. Row. A new man with a shaken baby. Oh, just squared up in the middle right there. Here we go. Commentator curse. I think that's that's a thing, right? 100%. You just witnessed it right there. Here we go. That was a good example of uh, Tina and Juan not rushing 
to the kitchen line because first of first two shots were a little higher, so they just waited patiently so they got a better opportunity. Same here. Ooh. That's a tough one. You definitely see Kwong Dong trying to hit that drive behind Colin, get him out of the middle, see if they can get some more angles and get it uh, in a dink battle here with Buckner. Okay, there we go. They're coming back. 6-9 here, Carolina down three. Cameraman. No, that was a good dodge. He's a professional. He's done this a time or two. Just long. Great attempt at it. Let's take a second look at this one. Ooh, yeah. that was close. Athleticism there by John, just not enough. Kwong Dong able to put it away. Pisnik scrappy right there. The Rangers are a point away from the first half. That's another drive behind John's. And start working on certain things you're doing as a team and maybe being just a little bit more aggressive and you know improving and developing your game. Oh, just so you can't be mad at that. That's a great point there, young feller. I mean, fighting the whole way, that was a great reset on the first one. Nice big serve by CJ there. That's a, that's a good combination for them, actually, letting Brooke take the third shot and then CJ coming in, because Brooke's backhand, A, it's her favorite shot, and it's uh, world class. Just short. You know, something you were talking about earlier, you work on your game right here. Something you could also do with the rec courts when you're playing in some open play. You know, you might not be playing with your friends that you're there, you just hop in. You can always work on something no matter what levels that you're playing with. Yeah, 100% agree with you. I think there should be a combination of playing with people your level, higher levels and lower levels for, for different reasons. And if anything, you know, at one point or another in your life, you were just starting out and somebody probably helped you out and somebody played with you. So if anything, you can pay that back and keep growing the sport and get more people into the game. Here we go. Another great point wrapping up here. Fong Dong off the net, able to put it away. You're absolutely right. You know, this sport is built on philosophies like that. Thank you for that. up there. Yeah, it was a good hold. She kind of waited for Kwan to lean toward the center a little bit and then went behind him. 10-15. That one's long. I feel like that four to six point range is kind of that comeback area for teams. If it gets bigger than that, much, much harder. What a get. Oh, just long, great point. Pisnik definitely not interested in a uh, cross-court dink battle with Colin Johns right there. It was actually not a bad idea by Brooke, right, because Tina was leaning in. 
pretty close into the kitchen line. Just so hard with the altitude. Uh -oh. Great footwork. Able to hop a little bit over the kitchen. Step back in Ernie. Down the middle. That was well done. Long return there. And I would say this. Big serve. Yeah, and I would say the same for the Rangers team. Yes, they want to close this match out, but they do have a considerable lead, so this could also be a time to work on some elements of the game. It looks like Tina is trying to serve a little bit bigger as well, so there's always something. Tough backhand return, trying to get it cross court. All right, down nine. Carolina looking to make a move. Yeah. Nice little kitchen battle there. One again by the ranchers. Up 10. Four points away from closing out this game. Another winner from Kwong Dong there. Keeping the pressure on, closing this one out. point right there. Excellent job by CJ taking a little bit of pace off on the last volley, not trying to hit the counter through the court. And then ball drops just enough for Tina to hit the net. Ooh, got a little bit jammed on that, on that drive. 23-12 for the Rangers. For Scorpion, we got a first match point of the game. 24-12. And there it is, as they close out the game. Another great point, though, some ATP defense. The Ranchers 